Now for the short time I've been a part of the Mono Price Maker Select Mini community, I've seen a lot of people ask questions about how to level the bed. They don't think that the instructions give you enough detail or teach you enough on how to level the bed. And I've found this is fairly simple for somebody who has been 3 printing for a while and has printed on other machines that have a manual bed leveling. So I decided I was going to give you a quick video or tutorial on how to level your bed. This one being with the Mono Price Maker Select Mini. Now, as you can see here, I am actually running Build Talk instead of the standard masking tape that runs on the Mini here that comes with the printer, but is the exact same thing, no matter what build surface you're using, whether it's acrylic, Flex 3D, painter's tape, or build talk. Now, the first thing you wanna do, of course, is come over to your main menu, and you wanna go over to your move. Now, you wanna come over to your home axis that way you have it set precisely where it needs to be. Now, one thing that I've learned in the past is before I level, I always go over and I heat up the bed. Whether it's to 206 degrees or higher, I found that the expansion between the different components in this really can make a difference in your bed leveling. So I've just set my bed at about 200 degrees, or I'm sorry, my extruder at 200 degrees, and my bed at about 50. And I found this only makes a slight difference, but it's enough to um, worry over if you're a perfectionist. Now the next thing you want to do is come over to move and hit home axis. Now this is going to move and actually home your print bed here. As you can see it's doing its, its work here. Now the next thing that you want to do is actually turn off your printer or Loosen or free the axes so you can actually move them around. I'm gonna go here Right, so you want to be able to move your axes around freely Because that is very important to what you're about to do now And the manual for the maker select mini they recommend you use a4 paper but I've found that either a nice thick business card or even a postcard a 3D Hubs Student Ambassador postcard I have here work perfectly fine. You just want to find something for, um, that you have that has a nice thickness that you'd be happy with the layer height. And so I want to take it back to about where it first homed, to the first corner. And you want to be able to slide this very easily under. As you can see here, I can't slide this at all. And I'm having a lot of problems doing so because right now it is way too high. So you're going to want to move your bed so you can get to your four corners with your Allen nuts. And now not all printers have these. Some of them have three. Some I've actually found have five. Some like this one have four. Now, the more there is the easier it gets to a certain point. But that's not something somebody should be worrying about who's trying to level their bed. So the thing you want to do here is take the Allen wrench that comes with your, your printer and the kit, and you just want to turn this lightly. Now, it's basic um, woodworking type of ideas here. Righty tidy, lefty loosey. And at this point, since I cannot slide the postcard under my bed, I'm actually going to tighten this down. And you want to give it about a quarter turn. And then I'm going to come back, slide it up under, and see if I can move the card under again, which I cannot. So I'm going to repeat the process. Now, the more you do this, the better and quicker you'll get at doing this. That is just something that you have to learn. Now I've actually found right here that the card slides under with only a slight bit of resistance and that's exactly what you're looking for. You don't want it to be too tight and you don't want the card to slide too freely. 
And that's just something you're gonna end up having to learn on your own. So now I'm gonna move this to the next point and I'll just select this corner. And I'll try this again. And the more you do this, the more you'll learn about how much to turn it. I would only recommend using about a quarter turn until you've done this a few times. And you also want to check more than just your corners as one side could be higher than the other and it can cause a bunch of problems down the road. Now this is something that you won't have to do all the time, but it is nice to check regularly as it does tend to get out of whack, but not very often. Now another thing you're going to want to watch out for, if you use some of the build plates, is some of them recommend you do not calibrate too close, as you will never be able to get your print off. And that is something that I have definitely learned through trial and error with Build Talk. And that's just something you're gonna have to play around with until you actually get everything set. Now, now that I am okay with the distance on the back here, I'm just gonna move this around to different points in the bed and test them. Now, you wanna kind of test your corners and the mid midpoint between each corner. Now, I'm gonna test the back left corner, the back, the back middle, the back right corner, the front corners, the middle, and I'm also going to check the midpoints in the bed. As you can see, there is no real problem here, so I'm just going to give this a first print to see what happens. Now to tell how well you've actually calibrated, you really have to run your first print. This really will tell you how well it's been calibrated as you want to look for the layer heights to make sure that they've actually been smushed down onto your build plate a little bit, but not too much as that makes it really hard to get off. And so for the first print, and what I just happen to have on my micro SD for this is four Maker Faire robots that happen to have at different settings spread across the four corners of the print bed. So it'll give me a good idea of how level my print bed is throughout the entire surface. Now, if you want more videos like this, or you have any comments or suggestions, please comment below. And if you've enjoyed this, please subscribe. For more reviews on 3D printing, on filaments and more products, check out 3dpgeek.com. Thank you.